In this video, we look at how to shift the equilibrium of an equilibrium reaction and the, the Le Chatelier's principle. Once I actually have a reaction in equilibrium, I can shift that equilibrium, okay? It's called stressing, okay? I can stress an equilibrium reaction to shift the reaction to go either left or right, GHT, okay? If I shift the reaction left, that means I'm gonna make more reactants. If I shift the reaction right, I'm gonna make more products. Okay, this is obviously really important in, in practical life for chemistry. Okay, so let's say you run a lab. You, you're making a product that you're going to sell, your pharmaceutical company or something. You wanna make as much product as possible, right? You want your, your lab to be set up to be very efficient at making as much product as possible. That way you are not wasting money, right? And also so you don't have a contaminated product, all right? So I want to be able to shift my equilibrium of whatever reaction I'm doing to force my equilibrium to make more products. I want to shift my reaction to the right. Okay, this is this is super applicable in real life. We have this lovely dude who's French, and his name sounds uh, French, so forgive me, Le Chatelier. Mm. That's how you spell it. Good luck saying it, all right? This dude came up with the principle about equilibrium, all right? Which is basically, Okay, so if I have a stress that I apply, my equilibrium is going to shift, it's going to adjust to balance out whatever stress I just applied on it, all right? And there's basically three stressors that I can put on a reaction, okay? There we go, three stressors I can put on an equilibrium reaction, right? Number one is to change the concentrations. Number two is if I change the temperature. Number three is if I change the pressure. And the caveat for this is only for gases, All right? Now, the thing that always comes up uh, as like a number four is what if you add a catalyst? Okay, but no. If I add a catalyst to the system, it just makes the reaction rate happen faster. It does not shift equilibrium. Okay, it does not change equilibrium. So please don't fall into this trap. A catalyst is not one of the things that's gonna shift equilibrium. All right, let's actually look at these, okay? All right, so I have a reaction here, okay? And I am, let's say it's at equilibrium, and I'm going to stress this reaction, okay? I am going to do the first thing, which is changing the concentration of things. All right, so for, uh, whatever, example A, what if I added nitrogen to my system, okay? All right, you use your pen or pencil, and you put it on your reaction and you line it up so that your arrows are somewhere in the middle of the pencil, okay? And then you just follow what the stressor is, okay? If I'm adding nitrogen, nitrogen's on this side, so I'm going to whoop, add nitrogen. And then you're going to look at your pencil and see which direction you are going to slide, okay? I would slide down to the right. If I added nitrogen, I would slide to the right. That's how my reaction would shift. Okay, I would shift to the right, slide right, okay? And you can think about this with Le Chatelier's principle like in theory, right? If I added nitrogen, my reaction, my equilibrium is going to want to adjust to balance out whatever that is. So it was nice, it was at equilibrium, and all of a sudden I have a ton of nitrogen on the side. So it's like, oh no, I have so much on, on the left. Ooh, I have too much on my reactant side. I need to 
make more on my product side to even that out, okay, to adjust it, to balance it out. Okay, so if I'm going to shift right, this means I'm going to use a different color, make more NH3, so the concentration of my NH3 would go up, right? And I would use up my H2, right? I would, so the concentration of H2 would go down because I would be shifting to the right, I'd be making more products, right? What about B? What if I uh, was in this system and I added NH3, okay? I have my pencil, I line it up. Now I'm gonna add NH3, so this side of my pencil comes up. And I'm gonna see, if I was a little person, which way do I slide on this, on this pencil? I would slide to the left. Okay, I would shift to the left, slide left. All right, so I'm gonna now make more reactants and I'm going to use up some products if I had added NH3. And again, right, I add stuff to the right, so my equilibrium's like, oh no, I have too much stuff on the right. Ah, let's make more stuff on the left to even it out. I could take away NH3, okay? What if I took away my product? So let's say I, you know, it was a closed system, and then I have a way to filter out my product. So now I remove product, okay? I'm going to slide to the right. Which again makes sense, right? If you were nice and at equilibrium, yay! And then you take away some stuff on the right, equilibrium is like, oh no, it took away all my friends on the right. I need to make more friends on the right. So you make more stuff on the product side, reactant side get used up. Okay, same thing if you take away H2. I've neglected him. Okay, so if I take away H2, so now this side of my reaction goes down. I take away H2, it's going to slide left, okay? So whatever reaction you have, you can just use your pencil to figure out which way you're going to slide, okay? Which way you're going to slide down, right? Imagine it was an actual slide. You're not going to slide backwards up, okay? You slide down a slide. All right, so that's concentrations. Type number two would be temp. So this is why we learn how to write out our reactions as endothermic or exothermic. So this would be an example of an exothermic. I have plus heat on my product side. The cool thing about this is literally nothing changes. You have the same thing, okay, as, as what we were doing before with your pencil. All right, so if, uh, for example, A for here, if you added heat, heat in this case is a product. So I'm adding a product. That means I'm going to slide to the left. If I remove heat, okay, so here's my nice equilibrium. I'm going to remove heat. I'm taking away a product. I will slide to the right. This is true for an exothermic reaction, okay? If I had the inverse reaction of this, the reverse reaction, and I added heat versus remove heat. Okay, now in this situation, heat is a reactant. So if I add heat, I'm adding a reactant. Right? I'm adding something on the reactant side, so I'm going to slide to the right. If I removed heat, I'm removing a reactant, I'm going to slide to the left. This would be for endothermic. Okay, it really doesn't matter so long as you know how to put your pencil down and shift it to slide left or right. Okay, the last one is pressure and that's the trickiest. Okay, and remember this is only for gases. So sometimes they like to throw a tricky question at you where none of the things are gases and they say they increase the pressure. Trick question, nothing happens. Equilibrium doesn't shift, okay? All right, so if you increase the pressure on a system of gases, uh, what happens with the gases is they don't like to be crammed, right? Gases don't wanna be bumping into each other. 
So the equilibrium will shift. If you are increasing the pressure, equilibrium is going to shift to favor whichever side of the reaction has less gas particles. Okay, and, and hopefully that makes sense, right? If you were crammed into a space, right? If you were like crammed into a clown car, right? You don't want to be crammed in a clown car. It's uncomfortable. You don't like it. You would like to shift your reaction. You'd like to slide whichever way gets less people around you, especially now. Don't be in a clown car in quarantine, okay? Bad idea. Wash your hands. Okay, so the idea for pressure is if you increase pressure, your equilibrium will shift to the side with less particles. Okay, so if I had this reaction, right, two hydrogen gas particles plus one oxygen gas particles react to make two water vapors, okay, because it's a gas the state of matter, right, saying that they're all gases. Cool. What I need to do, if I said I stress this system by increasing the pressure, right, if I increase the pressure, what's going to happen? What I need to do first is count up how many gas particles I have on each side. Well, here I have two hydrogens plus one oxygen. So on this side, I have a total of three particles. On this side, I have a total of two particles. Okay, so if I'm increasing the pressure, I'm squeezing it. This equilibrium is going to be like, screw this. I don't like being squeezed, right? I don't like being so squished. I'm going to shift to whichever side has less gas particles. In this case, I will shift to the right. Okay, the side that has less gas particles. If it was the opposite and I decreased the pressure, it would go the other way, right? If you're all spread out, spaced out, then your gas is like, oh, sweet, I've got all this room to move around. I'm going to expand. Ooh, I'm expanding, okay? So it's going to go the other way. It's going to favor the direction that has more gas particles. So this will shift left, okay? One last tricky example that they might throw at you. What if I had a problem like this, okay? Chlorine gas plus hydrogen gas react in an equilibrium reaction to make hydrogen chloride, okay, as a gas, right? I've got gases, so it says increased pressure. So cool, I know I need to count up my gases, so this side has one plus one, so this side has a total of two, this side also has a total of two, okay? No change. If I increase the pressure, no effect on equilibrium. Okay, because both sides have the same amount of gas particles. It doesn't matter. I'm squeezing it. Who cares? Okay, if I expanded it, who cares? So if I have the same amount of gas particles, it won't matter. If I have a different amount of gas particles, it will. That's for pressure. Okay, so three main ways to shift your equilibrium. Le Chatelier's principle, I can change the concentration of either reactants or products. I can increase or decrease the temperature. And I can change the pressure. That's it.